Okay, y'all. So I'm doing something completely new. Um, I really wanted to try this out to kind of see what it was going to look like, what we was going to do. Um, but here's what I'm going to do for y'all. So right now, if y'all see me looking this way, if y'all see me looking that way, um, I am actually going live on YouTube. So this is my very first time. Um, y'all know I am Instagram guru and I... I love the Instagram, but I'm going to go live and put my focus on YouTube today. Um, so we're really going to talk about how to define your target audience. So this is really important when it comes to growing your business and really learning how to um, you know, market your business properly, because if you don't know who you're selling to, you're kind of just selling to everyone. And we already know selling to everyone is selling to no one. Um, if you guys are new to follow me on Instagram, um, that's literally one of the things that I constantly say all the time when it comes um, to me being on Instagram live or me being, um, you know, making videos. But I, I want to actually, before I dive in, because I am new a little bit, I'm not really new to YouTube, um, but I don't normally go live on YouTube. So I was like, let me introduce myself. Um, so my name is Sierra Renice and I am a business consultant. So what I do is I really help small business owners learn how to grow and scale their business using systems and strategies so that you can start growing your business and attracting new customers and keeping your customers that are current customers to come back. Um, so I do a lot of strategy. I do a lot of systems. I do a lot of process. Like everything has to be set up properly in order for your business to operate. Um, I was actually able to get my six figures in my beauty brand, Love Kills. Um, if you guys have ever watched any of my other videos, please check them out. Um, and get, learn a little bit more about the business that I have. But I decided to make another business, right? My coaching business where I basically consult small business owners and show them how to really bring their their online business up and running and get you know more sales and more customers and things like that. So I just wanted to give me a give a little brief introduction. Um, I am going to try to go live a little bit more on here just so that I can get to know my YouTubers and you know my subscribers and things like that. So um yeah, we're going to get into it. So like I said, we're talking about target audience. So target audience is really important because your business is not going to grow and your business is not going to make any money without your audience, right? Your customers, the people who are actually going to buy into you, the people that are going to purchase with you. So one of the things that I will tell you guys, I'm going to do a little brief breakdown and this is what I really teach and um, some of the challenges that I have where um, we basically, you know, go through the, the steps that I went through in order to get my business to six figures. So one of the things, obviously, is transforming that mindset. The second thing is learning who you are selling to, right? Doing that research and figuring out, okay, is this type of person I want to sell to? Um, are they going to buy this? Are they going to be able to afford this? When it comes to being a business owner and selling a product or offering a service, you have to make sure that, for one, people want it, and then who are the people that actually want it? So that's what we're going to break down today. Um, and there's going to be three key elements when it comes to breaking down this target audience. So number one is the demographics. The second is the psychographic. And then the third is the behavioral. So those three things alone is going to make up your target audience. So nothing too crazy, right? It's, it's just more so sitting down and figuring out, okay, what is what with your ideal customer? And then we're actually going to talk about, you'll hear me say it throughout the live. Um, I'm going to say an ideal customer profile. So what you want to have is an ideal customer profile because if you don't, like I said, you don't know how to sell to them. You don't know how to attract them. You don't know how to get their attention. When it comes to being a business owner, if you are not um, really strategic and you know you don't have a plan on how you're going to say, hey, I have this product, um, but you know this is specifically for you. If it's so broad, people are not going to pay attention to it. You have to make sure that you niche down your target because who are you talking to? Who are you trying to sell to? And like I said, when you sell to everyone, you're selling to no one. So we have to make sure that we are really strategic about, okay, who are we selling to? Who is our ideal customer? That The ideal customer profile, right? So this is um, what we're going to break down. We're going to break down the demographics first, the psychographic, and the behavioral. Um, for anyone joining on Instagram, I am going live on YouTube trying something new today. Um, so my main focus is them. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I tried this. I'm like, I never go live on YouTube. Let me give it a go. <laughs> um, so we're going to start with the demographics. So when it comes to demographics, simple things, simple things, and it may take you a little bit longer to discover it. I think for me, it took me about maybe a good, well, 
I should say this. So before I actually knew these things, right? Because I've been in business since 2016. I probably didn't know what my ideal customer was until like 2019, 2020. I'm going to be real with y'all. Not going to lie. But that goes to show you how you could be a business owner for so long and not even be aware of the things that you need um, to, you know, develop your business a little bit better. And this is why I am here for y'all. Because if you are in your first year of business and you're learning about what a target audience is, you're set. You're you're literally on a path to, you know, reach your success and do the things that you want to do. Because I was literally, what, four or five years in before I understood what a target audience was. So y'all are 10 times ahead of, you know, an average person um, just by watching this live or, you know, being interactive with me and figuring out, okay, how do I sell to people? You need to make sure that you're selling to a specific type of people. Um, and when we say niche down, that's exactly what we mean. That specific group of people. We want to make sure that target, that target is is really important because we're targeting those specific type of people. Um, and then the demographics. So let's get into it. So in first things first, when it comes to demographics, it's plain and simple demographics. Um, so it's basically your age, your gender. Your income, your occupation, your ethnicity, and your religion. Had to look at my notes, y'all, because I was like, I know there's a bunch of different things that makes up the demographics, um, but I wanted to make sure I read y'all off the right ones. So age, self-explanatory. How old is your target audience? And this is, believe it or not, a lot of small business owners, they know, oh, I want to sell to this person, but you know, they'll just say, oh, their age, they're probably just about maybe 25 to 35 or people even look at their Instagram insights. So if that's something that you're not aware of, check out your Instagram insights um, because it'll basically show you the people who like your content, the people who, you know, interact with you the most. So make sure that you look at that because um, that'll actually help you with the age. But I have seen people look at Instagram demographics and it has not worked for them because they have just maybe attracting the wrong type of people. So don't go full blown on relaying on Instagram um, analytics and insights because think about, OK, who you don't want to sell to. So this is really big and it's really important when it comes to defining your target audience, because you want to make sure that you're not selling to someone that you don't want to sell to. So say, for instance, I don't want to sell to when it comes to my consultant business, I don't want to sell to young entrepreneurs. So I want to say like, We'll shoot for young entrepreneurs like 13 to 16 years old. Because when I was 12 years old, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know what to do or where to look. So I don't really care to, you know, dibble and dabble in that young age um, range because I want to make sure that their mindset is at a certain spot. So I know that when I go to target my my customers, right, my clients, they're definitely of age of 25 and up you know, may cut off to 35, may cut off to 40, depending on, but I want to make sure that they're being able to comprehend the things that I'm talking about. I know sometimes, yes, as a 13 year old, you may be a little bit more developed than the average, but I can't base that upon one or two people. So I know that I will never target to anything under 25 because I know as a, as a young business owner, I kind of didn't listen to the things that I need to listen to from the people who actually um, were trying to tell me things. So I know when it comes to defining my target audience, I know who I don't want to sell to. So make sure you understand when it comes to defining your age, your gender, your income, your occupation, the ethnicity, and the religion, that you are not focused on the people who you don't want to sell to. So we know that it's your age, right? Your target audience is someone who's of age of 25 to 35 or 20 to 40, whatever it may be. That's your first standpoint of coming up with your customer profile, your ideal customer. So then we get into the gender. So are you selling to men? Are you selling to women? Are you selling to both? Right? This is really important because if you don't have um, a business that's going to cater to the female audience thing and you're attracting the female audience, then you're not going to get sales. So it doesn't make sense for you, right, to actually start marketing to females or, you know, creating these things for females when your original purpose of your brand was for men, right? So say, for instance, if you have a suit company, you got a suit company and it's catering more to men and you want to start adding in women's suits, right? Because women wear suits as well. But realistically, you're going to have to figure out, okay, how can I get these women and what type of women, right? Am I going to have to attract? Because we've always been selling for, to men. But how do we get the, the women to kind of look at us and say, okay, hey, you know, they're, they have a, a woman's collection, right? So it's all about that strategic, you know, thinking and making sure that you're doing things the right way. 
Um, even for me, for instance, I'll tell you a true story. When I started my beauty brand, I was all full blown women. Like I, that's all I cared about. Women were the people that I was selling to because I started off with lip gloss and lipstick. Years went by. I was like, okay, let's try something else. Um, let's try to add something in for the men. Like people start coming up to me and asking me, um, oh, do you have like beer oil? Do you have beer butter? And I was like, oh no, but you know, I can make it, you know, I can make it for you. And then pretty much, you know, I start selling towards men, but realistically I wasn't making sales from men and I didn't even think about it. And I know a lot of y'all going to feel hurt about this, but it's been me and I've been there. A lot of times I created a product or start offering a service based upon one to two people telling me that they wanted it. If that's not my target audience, then I shouldn't be trying to target them. Right. It doesn't make sense for me to try to target to these people. Right. Who may have hit me up or may have encountered me and asked me for. It. But realistically, if that's not who I want to sell to, if that's not who I want to cater my business to, then why am I sitting here creating products, wasting money, wasting inventory and they're barely selling? And a lot of people run into this problem. A lot of my clients are like, oh, Sarah, I have all this inventory and I don't know how to sell it. It's just sitting here. It's been sitting here. for. That's because you bought stuff that nobody wanted. And this is why we need to figure out who we are selling to. Because if you just constantly, you know, say, oh, this person asked me to do this. This person asked me. Now you're stuck with all this inventory and it's it's going nowhere. Because you you got feedback from people who are probably not in that ideal customer profile. And that's what you need to make sure the people that shop with you, the people that ask you for things are the people who actually are going to continuously shop with you. Not somebody that's going to shop with you one time because who wants that? Who wants somebody that's just going to shop with them one time? I want my audience, I want my customers to come back to me every single time, whether it's every two weeks, every month, right? Just like think about um, hairstylists. They, they target to certain people. If they don't want to do kids hair, they don't want to do kids hair. And they're not going to market to that. They're not going to target those those type of people. I am strictly doing this person's hair. And if you don't fit this profile, then yeah, you might could just want to do it, but don't look at them as a person to come back. Like that, that's kind of what I, I feel like don't look for that person to come back and really, um, you know, shop with you or, you know, purchase your services multiple times. So then now let's get into the income. So income and occupation is really important because, because, if you are trying to target someone, so say for instance, my business um, where my beauty brand, I have fairly nice products. They're probably ranging from about 15 to 30 bucks, right, per product. So I know for a fact I can't target, again, right, a young adult or, you know, someone in lower, like middle school, high school, beginning high school, because realistically, they may have a job, but their main thing is not to spend $30 on a body butter or to spend $35 on a hair oil, right? Their their mindset and the way that they think is, okay, they're bringing home that $200 check every two weeks from working at McDonald's or working wherever, right? I'm not going to target to little girls and little boys because realistically, they're not going to be able to really... Now, granted, me, I ain't going to lie. When I was young, I spent money on what I wanted, whether it was perfume, whether it was clothes. I spent money on what I wanted, but I know that I'm not about to stress myself out and try to figure out, okay, if they're only making $200 every two weeks, which is roughly like what? Probably like ten to $15,000 in a year. That's not really going to bring me no income, right? So let's let's take it up a notch and let's go, okay, at least 20-year-olds to 30-year-olds, they average in about maybe thirty to $40,000 in a year. And they can give or take, you know, spend $100 on some products um, once every month, right? So this is helping me identify who I want to sell to and who I don't want to sell to. So income and occupation is really, really important because you don't want to have this high price product. Even me, like even with my con consultation business, um, I don't market to people who, like I said, are younger or, you know, under the age of 25 because realistically they're not willing to invest no thousand dollar service, right? Thousand dollars worth of service to build their business up. They're in the beginning stages. They like, oh, I'm just going to college. I'm gonna just figure it out right through college. So it's really important um, for y'all to take these things into consideration so that you know who you are selling to. Now we get into ethnicity and religion. So this is not a huge, huge factor. And I tell people all the time, do not stress thinking about the ethnicity and the religion because it may not pertain to your business in particular. So for instance, Say that you have um, a brand where you're doing inspirational quotes um, on your t-shirts, right? 
you don't want to worry about ethnicity if it's not just specific one ethnicity. So say, for instance, there's a lot of uh, black businesses who do um, black empowerment. So, you know, for a fact, your ethnicity, you're targeting to the African-American descent, not the Caucasian descent, not the Indian. Right. You are targeting directly to black owned business owners. Right. Black owned businesses. You're you. You have to worry about ethnicity. Because you're making sure that no one else is going to purchase your stuff but the black people. So this is why it's very important to make sure you go down this long list of demographics to make it make sense. You have to make it make sense. And like I said, ethnicity is not going to be a factor in my business in particular unless I decided to niche down and say, okay, I only want to sell black skincare products. But that's not my thing. So I'm going to sell to all skincare types. So now ethnicity goes into a wider range. So I don't really play or put ethnicity into um, into place when it comes to defining my target audience. But if there's something where you only wanted black business um, or black um, customers or, you know, Caucasian customers or Indian, like whatever it may be, then it makes sense for you to really buckle down on that ethnicity that you're trying to target. But for me, and that's for both businesses. It doesn't matter because I work with all types, all skin care or all skin types and all um, ethnicities when it comes to my consultation business. Right. So these are things that you guys need to know. So religion, another thing that's kind of like um, case by case, you do not need to cater to a certain religion unless you are selling something religion based. Does it make sense for you to um, say, for instance, you don't want to market to Christianity um, if it has nothing to do with your brand. Now, if you're putting things on your products, if you're putting, you know, scriptures and, you know, things that relate to that religion, then by all means, you need to target those type of people. But if that's not your thing and that's not your main focus, then I wouldn't worry about it. If you could figure it out and define it, that's fine, right? That's that's a okay. But I don't want you to make it so so small that you're losing money from people who are willing to actually purchase from you that are not in that religion. So if it's not a factor and it's not something that really comes into play, don't worry about it. I honestly stress that you get your age, you get your gender, the occupation, and the income. Those are my four things that I highly encourage y'all to start looking into when it comes to niching down on your target audience. So now let's get into the psychographic. So this is my favorite part because this is where we really break down and figure out, okay, how do I get these people to see my product? So when it comes to psychographic, we got interests, personalities, values, opinions, and lifestyle. Five things. Interests, personality, values, opinions, and lifestyles. So this, this category alone, this information, this data alone will literally show you how to get your customers, right? New customers, get your old customers to come back. Remind them that you're here, right? Because when it comes to psychographic, it's literally what they do. What are they interested in? What do they do on the daily? Um, and when I do my actual strategy calls, which I have taken a break from because um, we're doing a lot of rebooting and um, adding new things. When it comes to my consultations and, or I'm sorry, my strategy calls and a person is on the phone, right? And we're trying to figure out, okay, who are you selling to and why you can't market properly? It's because you don't know what your ideal customer is doing. So what do they like to do? Do they like to go shop online or um, do they like to shop in the mall? Uh, do they like going out for drinks? Do they like five-star restaurants? Do they like, um, you know, just your average typical going to a Friday's, going to Applebee's, right? What is it that that person likes? Because now once you once you actually define who what that person likes and what they like to do, you know, okay, if my girl, right, if I, so say for instance, one of my clients, she actually has a great um, fashion boutique. She sells clothes. So what she does is her, her clientele is really upscale. They're really, you know, kind of just like, they doing the thing, right? They making at least $70,000 in a year. Um, they want to make sure they look sophisticated. So where do sophisticated women go? They go to five-star dining restaurants. They go, you know, maybe to shopping centers, shopping malls, to go to the nice higher-end stores. So you need to make sure that you are targeting that actual person in the right places. So if you feel like, hey, <laughs> I'm on YouTube Live right now, so I was trying something new. So my focus is really over here, but I made sure that I still went live for Instagram so you guys can kind of see like the behind the scenes um, of me doing content for YouTube. But if you know that you are struggling with getting new customers, that's because you don't know who you're selling to. And if you do know who you're selling to, now it's time to start marketing to them. Start putting it in their face. If you think about 
a McDonald's, if you think about a Chick-fil-A, you don't be thinking about that until you see that big old M off the highway, right, on the side of the road or whatever. Maybe you see the cow billboard, right, because they're marketing to the people that they know what they're doing on the daily. They're running around. Oh, I got to stop and grab something to eat. Oh, I just saw the Chick-fil-A billboard. Let's go to the Chick-fil-A. It's on exit 22. Y'all, it's as simple as that, but it's like because we are not doing the work and we're not really trying to figure out who we're selling to, that's why we're not able to market and get our business out there in front of people. When it comes to being a business owner, if you want to make sales, you need to make sure that people know that you exist. If people don't know you exist, then how are they going to purchase from you? You got to put it out there. And I'll tell y'all right now, if y'all the type of person where you don't want to go out and network and you don't want to go talk to people, you're not going to do well in business. I promise you. All that being shy and all that, oh, I don't really want to go have the conversation. Your money going to be sitting right there, <laughs> right there. Not 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 with you, with something else, right? In, the, in that customer's pocket because you was afraid to say something. And this is why. We got to get out of our comfort zone. Um, so then we talked about the interests, their personality. So are they fun? Are they bubbly? Do they like to be social? Do they not like to be social? Do they sit in the Do they sit in the house and watch TV? These things alone, like if you think about it, I tell people all the time, this is another example. If you think about Lamborghini, Ferrari, um, Rolls Royce, all those different high-end luxury car brands, they do not have commercials. Do you want to know why? Because their average person who is, you know, their customer, they're not watching TV. You know why? Because they're millionaires, they're billionaires, right? They, they're they in meetings, they're, they're recording, they're doing all these different things. They don't have time to sit in front of a TV and watch. The best bet to get them, right, was the opportunity on Sunday when they was at the Super Bowl. All the, all the rappers, all the businesswomen, businessmen, they were at the Super Bowl. So that was your best time to market your business at the Super Bowl, get a billboard, get a commercial, right? But realistically, those people that are driving those Lamborghinis, those, May those Maybachs, those Ferraris, they're not sitting down watching TV. They literally don't even probably turn the TV on. So let's be smart about the way that we're actually putting our business out there and doing the things that we need to do in order for it to get into the, the right people's um, faces. We don't want to be marketing on social media and you could be going, so say for instance, you have, um, hmm, don't want to go with that example. I don't know, but pretty much think about the, the people. Um, so say, for instance, my mom, she's around the age of 50. I would never, if my target audience is some somebody in her age bracket and the things that she does, I would not ever go on Snapchat and market my business because realistically, a 50-year-old is not on Snapchat. I'm going to be real with you. There may be some, there may be a few, but realistically, overall, no. Especially if it's something where you're trying to teach them, impact them, empower them. They're not on Snapchat. I'm going to be honest. They're not. They're not going to watch your story. They're not going to watch your whatever you can do, right? And even same thing with TikTok. There might be some 50-year-olds on TikTok, but realistically, the, the group people, whether it's 50-year-olds that's sophisticated, they work a professional career, um, and, you know, I'm trying to teach them to really give back into their selves. Something so simple like that. They will not be on TikTok or on Snapchat. It just doesn't make sense. And this is why a lot of our businesses don't get the right target, right? Or the right customers because you're you're on the wrong platforms. You're doing the wrong things. So how y'all feeling on Instagram? Um, how y'all feeling on YouTube? I was like, can I see the chat on here? But I can see the chat. I actually like YouTube, y'all. I might be on here a little bit more because it, it's, it's giving me the vibes. I like it. Um, granted, I can't see who joins, but I ain't worried about it. <laughs> I ain't worried about it. Um, and then another thing when it comes to the psychographic data is really thinking about what that person values. So do they value family? Do they value quality time? What is it that they're valuing? Because you don't want to, um, so say for instance, I don't know if y'all ever heard of the book, um, The Five Love Languages. So that book alone is targeting people who values to be loved right off the bat. They value to be loved. And I don't even know the author, but I know that that person knew that when they were going to put that book out, they were going to target people who are either in the phase of getting in a relationship or trying to work on how to better their relationship, right? Something in that manner and showing them how to really, you know, pick what their love language is. And also they are valuing to be loved in a certain manner. 
So what does your average customer value? Do they value quality time? Do they value, you know, um, making money? Do they value spending time with their family? What is it that they are actually going to value? And that's really important. Um, so relatable. What's a good way to screen my audience besides polls? So for me, um, especially for what you do, um, coach, I feel like in-person interaction is always great. Um, if you are trying to figure out, you know, how to get more customers or how to really niche down on that target audience, start doing in-person interviews, whether um, you want to go live, right, or even go around your neighborhood and your community or where they would be at, right, based upon their interests and their personality and their values, go to places. So right off the bat, you're writing a book, right? You wrote a book. I would go to a Barnes and Noble or a local bookstore and see the people, like even the basics, if they're women, if they're women and men, right? Kind of go scope them out. Go ask them questions. Y'all know how many times people, celebrities, so many things. There used to be a show. It's probably still on. I don't know. I don't really watch TV. But there used to be a show like a good five, ten years ago where um, they were in New York. They were based in New York. And I want to say it was either MTV. It was one of those uh channels right and they basically went around asking people questions granted some of it was for fun some of it was just because right just because it was entertainment but do that same thing for your business if you are say for instance you're selling fashionable clothing go to the highest point part in your city or go travel to the next day over and go to where people go shop at and go ask some questions. What styles do you like? You know, do you like this outfit that I'm wearing? Just doing things simple like that will, for one, give your, your business and your brand awareness. So you having that simple conversation or interviewing that person, after you answer those questions, here's my card. Or here you go, follow me on Instagram for more of this. Or um, I know for a fact when I go do photography shoots, right? Um, and granted, that's not a business that I really push a lot. It's really just a side hustle. But when I go to do photography shoots, I'll say, oh, go to my Instagram and give them one of my business cards. It may not even be pertaining because I don't, yeah, I don't even have a photography business card, but something alone, like passing them my coaching business cards. I'm like, okay, hey, if you want the pictures, just DM me. Now I got a whole new follower. I got a potential client that's going to come back to me for photography. And then now they're following me and watching my things about business development. That alone, that alone just got me a customer, whether it's through my side hustle, whether it's through my consultant, right? There's so many things that I just did alone just by interviewing that person and asking them um, questions about, you know, this outfit or, you know, taking their picture and making them feel good, right? So, y'all, it's really important. Um, that was a good question. I got that from Instagram. Um, somebody asked me what's a good way to screen my audience besides polls. Do live interactions. Do do walk up on them. And I know Corona been, you know, taking over. So people have been like, eh. But I feel like most people are open to actually, you know, get the feedback and, you know, answer questions. You might just want to approach a little bit lightly. Don't pull up on them like, yo, right? <laughs> you want to just make sure you're doing it in the right manner because I know for a fact certain people walk up on me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, <laughs> back up. Don't, this is what we're not going to do. But no, I feel like if you approach it with um, care and, you know, just making sure you're keeping your distance, everyone will really, some people, honestly, because I've seen it, some people won't even answer your question. That's okay. I'm going to ask the next person. Um, if y'all ever listen to, oh, I don't even remember uh, the actual YouTube video it is, but there's a, a, a speech from Les Brown and he talks about how, um, he was a door-to-door -door salesman, and he said he used to knock on the door, no, do, 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 no, right? And that's even in door-to-door -door salesman, um, if you ever had that job, granted, I've never done it, but I've seen people around me do it. You all constantly beg people or knock on people's door and try to get their attention and try to get them to buy things, and they'll say no, but you're going to get a person that says yes, I promise you. So keep working at it, keep doing it. It may seem like it's super stressful, and oh my gosh, they're not working toward it, but I promise you. It's going to work out as long as you keep going. And that's where consistency comes into play. So now let's get into the last element of defining your target audience, which is behavioral data. So behavioral data is really important because now it's time to figure out, okay, how does this person shop? What do they like? Right. Um, what are the types of things that they would like to do? And that's another thing where you could do a live in-person interview um, or survey um so say for instance do your person does your ideal customer like to shop in store 
or do they prefer to shop online? I know for me, I'm an online person because I don't like being in the stores. I don't like walking in malls. I don't like, it's just too much, too much human interaction. I need to just be literally on my phone being able to, right? Fast and easy, convenient while I'm chill, chilling on the couch, right? But some people like to actually go in the stores. So they may want to see how it fits or see how, you know, the, the texture feels, the material feel. Um, and then I'll actually give y'all a word of advice. If you do have some type of clothing or fashion boutique and you sell strictly online, be sure to be really, really, really descriptive in your um, online store because you don't want someone to come to your website and they, they are a type of person where they prefer to shop in store, right? And you're online and they don't understand what material this is. So if you don't have the material, if you don't have the thread, like all of those things play a part. So make sure that your website is up to par so that people are understanding what type of products you have and what material and all those types of things. So that's a little word of advice that I have um, for y'all, for anyone who is into clothing. Um, make sure that your website really describes the the material and the the things of your actual clothing. Another thing when it comes to behavioral data, right? Um, when it comes into defining that target audience is how does your customer like to purchase? So what motivates them to purchase? Do they want to see referrals? Do they want to see testimonials? Um, do they want to see you wearing it? Do they want to see other people wearing it? What motivates your customer to actually just be like, all right, I'm a purchase, right? Um, and most of the times it is reviews, testimonials, seeing other people wear it because people would prefer to see other people experience you or experience your brand or your product before going to purchase. Like, eh, I sell skincare, skincare products, right? And some one person could be on my website and be like, oh, I want to try this. This sounds nice, but I don't see no reviews. So now I lost a customer because I don't have customer reviews on this specific skincare product, especially when skincare is something that is, Girl, don't play with my skin. <laughs> don't play with my skin because that's what we not going to do. We not going to play with my skin. Um, so think about it. What motivates a customer to purchase? If you need reviews, if you feel like your customer is going to shop with you more because you have more reviews, then start getting more reviews. People that have shopped with you maybe a year ago, get a review. And then a way, I will tell you all an incentive, a way to get a customer to review your product or service is to give them some type of incentive. So say, for instance, I saw, I saw um, one of my customers, she bought probably like three things. She probably spent a good $100 with me. So that means she trusted me. She was ready to use my product and she likes it. So hit her with the, okay, you spent $100 with us. If you leave us review, right, in this time frame, because you want to make sure it gets done, in this time frame, I will give you a coupon code as soon as you're done. I actually did that before with my beauty brand. Um, I sent, like, an email to my subscribers, and I told them, I said, um, it was like, treat treat me something. I don't know. I, I did something with it, but basically sent them an email and told them to go review a product that they have purchased from us, and they'll receive a, a gift, and they got a discount on their next purchase. And people seize the opportunity because why are we not? <laughs> why are we not going to want a discount? And then that's where we take it to the next point. How do they like to purchase? So if a, a discount or a deal is going to attract them, then what you need to be doing? Having discounts and deals. If they like the fact that your prices are stern and you, your price is your price, then make sure your price is always your price. If they don't, if they would prefer a discount, then you know you need to be having sales at least once a month. So you can be getting customers, right? It's very important to monitor your 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 target uh, customer because if not, you're, you're selling to kind of everybody and it's not making sense. It's not making any sense to you and it's kind of just like, I got all these products, right? We go back to, I got all these products and who am I going to sell them to? Because we don't know who we're selling to. Um, and then another thing. Um, so if you are a type of person where you're like, oh, I want to market to people on social media. How much time do they spend on social media? Realistically, are they spending a lot of time on social media? Um, I actually had to like kind of backspace, delete that with my team and was like, y'all, how about we not really do um, posting in the morning, at least from like, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. because realistically, my target audience, they're not online. They're at work. They're doing something, right, for their kids or they're in a meeting or they're, right, they don't have time for social media. So realistically, they spend most of their time after they get home. Take these things into perspective. You don't want to be posting on social media four times from 8 a.m. to 12 and they're not, they're not seeing it. Now, granted, they could see it later on, but why not post something fresh? For them at three o'clock when they just got off, right? And they're gonna get in the house and they're gonna see it at four o'clock. 
right? And Instagram is already something that's like algorithm crazy. So people are not going to see everything that you post unless they go look for it. So take that into consideration. How much do they, how much time do they spend on social media? Um, what do they, do they use Google? Do they search things on Google? Cause maybe that means you need to go get a Google business, right? These things are so important y'all. And I hope that this video has helped. Um, that is all I have for y'all today. Make sure you use these things that I taught you guys today. Um, the three key elements of building up your target audience and make your ideal customer. So figure out who your ideal customer is. Go through the age, the gender, the income, the occupation, their interests, their personalities, their values. How do they shop, right? Do they prefer discounts? Do they like to um, purchase online or in the store? Take all of those things into consideration and figure out who your ideal customer is so that you can start properly marketing to your business or to your customers. I'm sorry. In my head about some crazy stuff. Um, so yeah, I hope y'all like this. Um, my Instagram people, I was on YouTube live and YouTube live. I was on Instagram um, just because that is definitely my biggest following um, is on Instagram, but I'm trying to get my, my YouTube up there. Try and get my YouTube up there. So I'm going to show up a little bit more. I'm going to make sure um, y'all see my face a little bit more and you learn more information from me just as much as I deliver it on Instagram. So if you guys do not follow me on Instagram, please follow me. My at name is in the description box. Um, I am going to post this and make sure that um, you guys are, if you are interested in learning more about what I do and how I help businesses, that you are able to tap in with me on there. Um, but yeah, y'all enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to upload this video. And then I got another video coming up um, later on this week. So that's actually going to drop on Friday. Um, it's going to talk about the challenge that I'm posting. So if anyone is interested in that, um, look forward to that on Friday. So enjoy the rest of your day. And if you guys have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you leave a comment. You like, right, um, this video and just share it with someone. So enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see y'all later. All right, y'all, so...